I'm joined this morning by Vince McHenry of Tried Wood Carvers Club. We're here this morning to talk about the ancient art of wood carving and how it was done uh, back at the old times in Bethabara as well as what we offer at Tried Wood Carvers Club today to our new members and trying to teach folks to carve. First of all, we start with safety. We use gloves and we use thumb protectors. That's one of the main things we try to teach is safety first. I'll talk a little bit about the uh, art part of wood carving and Vince will talk a little bit about the utilitarian part of wood carving as it was impacted uh, back in the days of Bethabra when they had to carve things to use. They would have used pocket knives. They would have used various different knives that they already had. We, on the other hand, uh, use a more advanced type of knife. We use uh, wood carving tools and gouges for our various different types of carving. I'll explain a little bit about uh, the carving that we do and how we take care of our knives. We sharpen our knives on a, a leather strop. This is very similar to what a barber would have used and still do somewhat on the straight razors. We sharpen these on the leather and it works very well. I'll also talk a little bit about uh, the type of uh, carving that I've done right here with the fish. First of all, with the fish that I've done, I've chosen a picture of a fish that I would like to do. I've also cut out a piece of that particular fish and I have traced that on a piece of basswood. From there, I've cut this out with a bandsaw. I've gone to the stage a little bit further. This one has already been cut out. I've already carved the shape of the fish and I have wood burned the scales in the fish. I have carved the individual fins on a very small piece of basswood. I have wood burned in the definition of the fins then I've gone in and I have attached the fins to the fish, I've painted it, I've put in the glass eyes, and I have attached it to a piece of found wood that I found outside my house. Found wood is another thing that people would have used in wood they found. This is a piece of English ivy that came out of my yard. I determined that I saw a snake in this ivy. I carved out the head, I put the eyes on the snake, I put the various different scales on the snake and carved the rattles, also doing the underside. I said this is just a piece of found wood. We also have a long-standing project of making certain items for the Ronald McDonald House for both the children there and the parents. Um, Angels of Hope is one of the items that we've made. Comfort birds are one of the items that we've made and comfort turtles. Comfort, that means it feels very good in the hand. It's kind of like a talisman, you know, of, of, of hope. Also at the club, we offer various different classes. Vince has taught classes in making spoons. We've had a class on making Santa Claus ornaments. And we've also had a class in making turkey feathers. We've also carved these. When we begin people carving at Tried Wood Carvers Club, we begin with simple projects. A mushroom is one of the first things we have people do. Then we graduate to a ball that we're doing. We have a boot that we're carving with new people and we're having a star. This is one of the best ways of teaching grain of wood. The grain of wood is very important to understand. For instance, carving this facet of the star is much different than carving this facet of the star. This is one of the best ways of teaching the different types, the different methods of carving along with keeping track of the grain of the wood. Now I'll turn it over to Vince McHenry. Vince, will you tell us a little bit about carving the utilitarian parts of the various different uh, needs of people at Bethabra and in olden times? The utilitarian part of, of what I'm going to talk about uh, Obviously, I'm going to talk about spoons first because one of the things that they would have needed to do was to have some implements to eat with, and the spoon was one of them that was reasonably easy to carve. And what we would start out with, you would start out, same with the fish, you would take a piece of wood and you would basically get the general idea, and then you would go about 
the process of getting it down to a spoon that you could use. This is a serving spoon, and this is a spoon that you would have used to eat with. Uh, the other spoon that we have is a measuring spoon. This is a tablespoon, and this is a teaspoon. And the other thing that we would have made would have been the bowls, and even the plates that they may have eaten off of would have had to be made out of wood. But since I've got this lovely little spoon in my hand, it brings me to a story. We like to tell the background of some of the things that we carve, and this is a Welch love spoon. And a Welch love spoon was back in the 16, 1700s in Wales, when a gentleman in the village had his eyes on a particular lady, he would have carved her a spoon with a message on it. And this is one of the spoons that he would have carved. It would have been a normal sized spoon. I've miniaturized it because it was just cute and it makes good Christmas ornament. Uh, but he has, a, he has a message here for the young lady. And the key on the top, the keyhole and the heart, and what he's offering her is the key to his heart. Well, the other thing that I like to talk about is the history behind some of the carvings is the 12-point German star and the 8-point German star. The star was inspired by a, a paper fold they taught to children back in the early years. And the German star was used for decorations during the holiday season. And that's what we use our stars for now is for decoration during the holiday season. Back to the holiday season, one of the things that we would like to do is when we talk about the, the Santa ornament, we start out with a triangular piece and there's various different ways of finishing it. You can finish them unfinished, raw wood if you want to call it that, and then also the painted one. Uh, the other aspect of wood carving that I deal with is shoes. Uh, they are not used for anything other than decorations around your house. We call them dust collectors. That's my take on this whole thing. Well, is there anything else you'd like to tell them about, Richard? Yes, we'd like to invite everybody to come join us at Trident Wood Carvers Club. We're presently meeting on Mondays in Miller Park at shelter number five across from Moore School. Once the COVID is over, we'll go back to our normal meeting place at Miller Park Recreation Center, Mondays at 3 o'clock. Please come join us. We'd love to have you.